if you are one of the millions of us ant keepers around the world who have fallen in love with keeping ants as pets but still feel like there is something you are missing or could do better to care for your ant colonies, stay tuned. Because by the end of today's video, you will know the top 5 mistakes an ant keeper can make and I guarantee you that avoiding those will take you a step further in becoming an ant keeping pro. Welcome to the Ants Vienna Ant Channel and let's get started. Okay, so whether you are just curious what you could do wrong in ant keeping or were just lucky enough to find a queen ant this nuptial flight season and want to know what things to look out for and avoid, this ant keeping tutorial will help you improve your basic skills and make your ant keeping journey much more enjoyable. And also guys, keep on watching till the end where we'll talk about where you can ask for help in case this video doesn't cover your problem. Now, let me begin by saying that if you take the time to look around this channel and its playlists, I have a bunch of helpful tutorials on a number of topics surrounding ant keeping. I promise I will do my best to cover the most common problems you could face in keeping pet ants in this one video, but after watching, feel free to check out my full Ants Vienna tutorial playlist here to dive further into a specific topic you might be looking for. Now, let's start with mistake number 5. Checking too often on your queen ant early on. So the ant colony you bought online has just been delivered or even better you manage to catch a queen ant yourself during a nuptial flight, namely the mating season of ants. This is a very exciting moment in life. As you want to take the best care of your pet, you leave the test tube that ants usually come in on your desk so you can check on it every minute or at least a couple of times a day. This is bad. Exposing queen ants to light and vibrations early on can lead to them eating their eggs or not laying eggs in the first place out of stress. Trust me, I've been in this situation more than once, but the best thing you can do for your queen in that beginning period is to provide her a test tube setup and then put her in a closet where she is protected from light and vibrations until her first set of workers, the nanitics, are born and raised by her. Now, let's move to mistake number 4. Moving ants in a formicarium too soon. Like many of you guys and girls out there, I had my first contact with ants in my childhood. By watching all those ants disappear underground. I've always wondered, how does their nest, namely the part you don't get to see in the wild, actually look like? We call them ant farms, and they come in all possible shapes and sizes, like ants do. I, for one, love being creative and trying out new things, so some of the ant farms I built have experimental features, others have vibrant contrasting colors and some let the ants dig their own tunnels just like they do in the wild. Therefore, it's only natural for an ant keeper to want a nice ant farm, also called a formicarium, to put their ants in. But what if I told you that what I wish I knew back when I started was not to put ants in a formicarium too soon. Experience has taught me that introducing an ant colony to a new environment like an ant farm too soon can not only slow down your pet's growth but even kill them at times. How, you ask? 
in a big unknown space, the ants may either first not find the food you provide them or second start filling up chambers with their organic waste which coupled with you watering the ant farm may lead to mold buildup that could eradicate a founding ant colony if not dealt with properly. So my advice to beginner ant enthusiasts is to leave your colony in their test tube as long as they need to and only move them into an ant farm when the ants are ready for it. As a bonus tip, I'm gonna tell you that since ants come in many shapes and sizes, the timing may differ but as a rule of thumb, small species like Lasius for example will do fine when they have 20 plus workers. Middle-sized species like Formica may do well with 10 plus workers. And finally, bigger species like Campanotus may even be fine with only 5 to 6 workers when moving them into a Formicarium. I hope this advice proves helpful to many of you guys who are just starting up with the ant keeping hobby. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you find this video helpful so it can reach and help out even more fellow ant enthusiasts. Mistake number 3. Incomplete ant diet. I often get the question, why are my ants not growing? I feed them every day. Then I ask in return, okay, so what do you feed your ants? And I get to hear, honey water. And that's it. Guys, ants are living beings, like us humans, and they need certain things in order to develop properly, both as individuals and as a colony. So, the proper question to ask is, what do ants need to survive? Well, first and foremost, ants need water. You can provide your ant colonies with water in many ways. You can lay a test tube in the outworld, namely the foraging area, of your ant setup to act as a water tank, place a liquid ant feeder in there, or just make sure to hydrate their formicarium often enough so it never runs dry. Ants also need carbohydrates in order for them to perform their daily activities. You can serve them carbs by feeding them sugar water, honey water, or fruit, like banana, apple, or grapes, for example. Last but not least, ants will eventually need protein in order to raise their young from eggs into larva and from larva into pupa before they can finally become worker ants. While you can, for example, feed your colonies with protein jelly, the best protein sources period for your ants will eventually be insects. Try out fruit flies, crickets, cockroaches, mealworms, superworms, etc. and see what your colony prefers. If you watch your ants close enough, you will know what they like most soon enough by the way they react when you feed them. Mistake number two. Not hibernating your ants. Depending on where you live, the local climate will dictate the behavior of native ant species. If, for example, you live in Central Europe, like me, where we have cold, snowy winters from November until March, wild ants will dig themselves deep into the ground and minimize their activity until it gets warm again. This is what we call hibernation period in ant keeping. Hibernation is said to prolong the life of your queen ants and is essential to ants originating from such climates. I know there are talks about skipping hibernation but this can shorten the life of your queen 
or lead to egg-laying pauses or general disorders in the way your ants behave. Plus, many ant species have an endogenous biorhythm which makes them pause activity during this time of year anyway. So, I suggest placing your ant farms into a cool room with the right temperature during their hibernation period. Taking a pause every now and then also keeps the hobby fresh. I can tell you that much from my personal experience. In my opinion, the most common and most severe mistake you can make is mistake number one. Picking the wrong ants for you. According to Google, in 2020, we shared the earth with an estimated one quadrillion ants spread out over more than 12,000 ant species. So, choosing the right ant species for yourself to keep as pets can be a very challenging task. Not only that, by picking the wrong ant species for you, you may end up having a hard time and turning ant keeping in an unpleasant experience instead of an enjoyable journey for you. So, what can you do to prevent that? Before buying or keeping any ants, do your research. Take your time to research a species, learn what temperatures, humidity and environment the ants come from. What is their diet? Are they native to rainforests or to deserts? And if researching online by yourself isn't your thing, feel free to join our Ants Vienna Discord server. There you can text and voice chat with many ant enthusiasts of our community around the world that keep all sorts of ants and will happily help you out. You will find an invite link in the description under any of my videos. A question that I very often get asked from you guys is what is a good beginner ant species? And I am very happy to tell you that we will cover this topic in great detail in a video coming soon. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. For now, you can check the videos that appear on your screen.